one of the uh, like one of the key parts of me understanding how much of a change I went through was um, a few weeks after my traumatic breakup. Like there was a situation where um, it was actually like the truth was revealed to me. So my ex-husband told me that he's going to take everything for no reason because I never did anything to cause this reaction. So there was this sudden shock of me understanding that he doesn't care about me at all. <laughs> he just cares about winning. And at that moment, I lost my hearing in one ear. <laughs> so due to this, um, I went to the doctor and then they were trying to exclude all the serious diseases. And unfortunately, they did an MRI and they found that it looks like I've got MS, so multiple sclerosis. And that should have been probably the worst news you could imagine or one of the things I think I feared in my life before. But it was a very strange situation because I was already living in the present moment, so I was already free from everything really. But and there are certain attachments that you face and then you drop them. And oddly enough, even though I thought um, intellectually or theoretically, I have distanced myself from any attachment. Um, however, at that moment, for some odd reason, the only thing I could think of was um, my family. So my immediate family, and it was like, uh, it wasn't a hallucination, but it felt like something broke, <laughs> like a chain broke or a, a rope snapped, and the images of them sort of faded off into the distance. And I, in that moment, I sort of went like, screw them. <laughs> like they have, like I've tried so hard to please them, and now I need to look at nothing but myself or my life. And so it was like a really bad moment in my life. It wasn't really a, the most pleasant um, diagnosis you may get. But it then also completely sort of um, like loosened or completely dissolved my attachment that I had to my family. So I was still trying to be friends with them. And um, interestingly, I then sort of in that moment where technically I would have needed them the most. Obviously they weren't there or anything. And then I just went like, I'm not even going to start to um, work with this anymore. I'm just... I'm out, <laughs> peace out, I'm not interested anymore. So it was like this weird dichotomy of like really good and really bad, but like, <laughs> wait, that, like I didn't evaluate. It was actually getting the bad news helped me um, completely get rid of any attachment that I may have had, which was really good because they were just draining and I sort of had to accept that it doesn't really matter what I'm going to do. Like if I'm really sick, <laughs> if I um, marry the psychopath, if I knock myself out, like this the head on my shoulder, <laughs> um, or whatever good things I may have done, like it doesn't make any difference. They're always going to like work against for some reason. So it's always a drain. It's always hard work. The other thing was that as soon as I got the diagnosis, uh, like I've had bad diagnoses before, but they were never that bad, obviously. Um, it puts everything into perspective, really. Um, but I had like a little bit of like, because the doctor sort of told me I was going to go blind, or they implied that I was going to go blind pretty soon. 
So I thought like, oh my God, like <laughs> I don't have only, I've barely lived and now I'm supposed to go blind. <laughs> and so like there was like this moment or this little bit of fear or a little bit of mm, what's going to happen in the future sort of thing. But then I just completely cleared that because you, your life changes com completely. So you recognize that the future, it's not real. So any thoughts that I may have about what may happen doesn't help and it wouldn't help in the situation. So in that moment, I like when I caught myself dragging myself down in my mind, I just stopped and went, what's the point? <laughs> like I've got the diagnosis either way, like I've got a mess, like if I'm going to be sad about it, I still got a mess. If I'm going to be whatever about it, I've still got a mess. <laughs> and actually like the less stress you have, the you know more likely of a chance you have to not have too many effects or whatever. Like it's difficult with MS because it's a bit, it's a bit of a unknown. Like it affects everybody differently. So <clears throat> this was sort of the point because I think before I didn't feel that interested in sharing this because. Like it's weird, like I was living in the present moment, like there wasn't really, it's it's completely counterintuitive. Like I don't go out in my real life and tell people how happy I am, that's not, it's peaceful, like approaching someone is not peaceful. I would never go to someone in real life and say, hey, <laughs> die to yourself, please. Like I always use this as my opportunity <laughs> to imagine talking to someone that wants to know this, wants to hear this. So in real life, this doesn't really happen very much. People are pretty set in their ways and in, obviously, you know, I don't, like there's nothing, like I don't tell people about this unless there's some sort of chance that I think that they may understand that they may do it in their own life. It's not about me telling people about my life. It's me trying to work out ways to make other people understand. And um, so <laughs> I sort of like throw myself into doing this work maybe slightly too hard <laughs> because um, I think about two weeks ago, I started to realize that I can't really see on one eye. <laughs> so um, I did fall on my head skateboarding a little bit, but it was a very small fall and I couldn't understand how, why would such a small fall damage my eye? So it took me a little while to exclude the eye, exclude the skull. And now I suddenly realized, oh, hang on, <laughs> this is a pretty typical MS symptom. So I haven't had any neurological symptoms yet. I assume this is the first one. So <clears throat> I sort of realized, like, I need to slow down a little bit. I need to um, try and work out a different way that is a bit more healthy for me, actually, like, um, I always laugh when people, like, comment about why you even on here doing this, and um, I'm, because it's such a, um, it's an odd thing for me to do, like, I, I never used to even record voicemails, <laughs> like, um, it's not something that, I would normally do it in my everyday life, but the only reason I'm doing it is because I sort of feel like I need to throw things out there. I don't know what's going to work. I don't know what you need. I don't know what, how I can help you. I'm sort of a little bit, um, like I wish there was something that I could say as soon as 
I can think of anything, but there's nothing I can ever say that will help you face your own fears. Um, it's about you facing your life, the truth to your life. So, <laughs> anyway, so like I sort of realized that in <clears throat> this, I, I mostly talk about things that help me in my real life so that you can see the same. And um, one of the things that like I haven't really shared, but like I feel like it's my hidden superpower. <laughs> um, like when I get injured, it's super easy to um, like see the injury, know what it is and just push through. So it's really easy for me to dislocate my shoulder and still go skateboarding. Um, I can feel it and I'll take care of it and I'll skateboard differently, obviously. But I'm never afraid of falling in on it again. I'll deal with it when it happens. And I think this mentality has sort of now pushed me to have probably the first neurological symptom. Um, because, like, <laughs> it's actually, like, you can't see it, or oh, I probably don't like, look very bummed about it, because it's, this is, this is sort of this, what I'm saying, it feels like a magic power. So, literally for a week, um, like, my vision, I know my eyes are open, but, like, I can see this, like, the bottom half, I can't see the top half, and uh, everything's a bit blurry, and, <laughs> like, everything's a bit weird. And so, I still went skateboarding. I still went out and did stuff because um, I can. Like it, I just adapt to it and just take it as it is and just move on. And you know, I surprise myself at the things that I can still do, even though I can't see. Like, mm, um, <laughs> but now I knew there's gonna be some point where I'm going to realize that I can't just push through like I need to I need to sometimes stop and recognize when there's something wrong and I always say my skateboard injuries are like practice for life and I'm sort of now I've realized that <laughs> considering I've lost like half the sight in one of the eyes that I need to take it a little bit more easy I'm still very, very committed to doing this, obviously. Um, I've sort of been relying on you quite a lot, or completely. <laughs> I'm just speaking and I thought that I would have to be speaking for a lot longer or for many, many years before people understand that what I'm talking about is the same as Krishnamurti or... Um, to just understand that I'm always talking about the same, it must be true. Um, I didn't quite <laughs> realize that um, I would receive such a warm response from all of you. And so I've always sort of relied on you sharing and helping me sort of spread this message. And I'm gonna have to rely on you a little bit more maybe and maybe try and calm down the videos and um, maybe give you more like um, longer videos or I'm not too sure yet I just know that like I needed to tell you what's going on and just be honest and straightforward and if I'm slightly missing or I'm not on like I'm not I don't really like sit down and answer many messages because I don't it's not very I it's a bit hard to sit at the computer and write <laughs> so that's why I do the videos so that's why I answer in video and um, I love talking about it this is super easy, so like I'm obviously not very well now, but I 
I love doing this. I love talking about it and I sort of have a bit of a, you know, maybe I won't be able to do this for that long because I think it's inevitable that like my mental health or not, I don't know if I'm going to have full mental capacity for as long as I would have wanted. So I sort of feel like I need to say stuff and try and talk to you and try and connect to you because there's just one person that listens to this and understands. There's just one person that can hear what I'm saying, what I've been through and understands that it's not that different to your life. There's nothing different about me. I've The only thing that's different is that I now live in the normal mind state. I live in the present moment. I see life as it is. Um, beyond beliefs, beyond the ego, beyond any of that. And there's nothing stopping you from doing exactly the same. And considering my health, I'd actually be grateful if somebody else takes this job. <laughs> no, I, I love doing it. I'm not trying to say, like, uh, hopefully I'm going to be doing this until I die as well. Um, but I could probably do with some help. Help. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening and watching and um, talk to you soon. I'll be back. I better get some treatment and then <laughs> a medical treatment, obviously. Like, I'm obviously going to go to the doctor to get some treatment. Like, this is not magic. I feel like I've got a superpower, but <laughs> my brain's still eating itself. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you soon. And... One love.